Ever spend the whole game gathering a fantastic loadout, setting up, and getting ready to nab those placement points? Then, when the end game comes, you just crumble under the intense pressure? If you've ever dabbled in competitive, you probably experienced those awful moments. But how can we prevent it from happening? There really is no easy answer. Overcoming the struggle and getting used to end game scenarios takes a lot of time and serious practice. How's it going, everybody? I'm your host, Dan, and I'll be sharing four of the newest creative maps to help you guys practice and overcome those endgame jitters. These levels are fitted with the latest loot pools and designs to help you get accustomed to the scenarios you're likely to encounter in Chapter 2. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuides.com where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com and be sure to drop a like on this video to show us your support. We really appreciate it. First up is a brand new concept, Lunar Peter's Infinite Respawn Zone Wars. What's unique about this map is whenever you die, instead of spending spectating until the round ends, you respawn in a safe box and only need to wait for the storm to catch up. This is perfect for players who want to practice their endgames but are fed up with having to sit out on every early death. With this map, you only need to wait mere seconds before hopping right back into the action. This map features four different respawn points and a zone that continuously moves toward them one by one. Once every spawn point has been visited at least four times, the zone starts to shrink and come to a close. So that's about 12 minutes per round. In terms of loadouts, everyone gets a blue rifle, a purple pump, a blue SMG, three slurp fish, and six minis, and an optional blue tack shoddy if you'd prefer that instead. Just press the button in your spawn room. You keep your exact loadout whenever you die. The slurp fish and minis don't replenish, it's just whatever you've got remaining. So think twice before mindlessly using them all in one life. Also, everyone starts with 2,000 wood to build with. That's right, only wood, but no big deal, you have a lot. You get 200 extra wood every time you spawn and 250 for each ELM. Just the right balance so that when you play it right, you're not ever running out. But also, not enough to mindlessly spam builds for the whole round. Obviously, the whole reason you'd choose this Zone Wars map over others is the respawn feature, which we absolutely loved. It reduces downtime by a ton and allows you to focus heavily on the rotational aspects of endgames. That's perfect for being able to get as much practice as possible. Just like with other Zone Wars maps, taking control of the high ground is pretty essential. But even more so with this one. Remember, the zone loops back to old areas. So so you'll have plenty of builds to work with. Whether it's conserving materials by using other players' builds or connecting your own to theirs, this map does a great job of teaching how to utilize old structures that come back into play. Alright, so another new map for you all, Bahama Zone Wars by Panville. This tropical map provides the classic Zone Wars experience. You've only got one life per round, so play it carefully. In terms of unique aspects and new designs, it's got a large river near the starting area of the map that the zone passes through, then comes back to eventually. Perfect as there are several different ways water is going to come into play any time a competitive game ends there. For instance, anyone holding high ground over it doesn't have to worry about fall damage if they're over water. That adds a bit of a twist to how things regularly play out, like when it comes to conserving materials or focusing the player holding height. Not only that, but low ground fights play out slightly wacky in water. Knowing how to tunnel while swimming or how to look for kills underwater are just two of the skills you can get better at playing this map. Also, if you're the one playing above the river, this map is going to help you improve your rifle tracking on the swimmers below. At the round start, you pick your weapons and drop down to a random area of the map. There's a short grace period where the only thing you can do is rearrange your inventory and build. You can't shoot or pickaxe, so use this time to make a base and get ready. As for picking your weapons, there are two versions of the map you can choose from, depending on if you want randomized loadouts or ones that are set in stone. The fixed loadout version has two options to choose from every round, a blue AR, green tack, and blue sniper, or a blue AR, purple pump, and blue SMG, with small fries and a slurp fish for your heals on both. Now, the randomized loadout version of the map doesn't give you a choice. You get a random set of items each round that includes the entire Chapter 2 loot pool. It's not entirely random or anything, like you'll still be guaranteed a rifle and shotgun, but one round you'll have an RPG, another round a sniper. One life, it's attack shoddy, the next it's a pump. You get the picture. We personally like the randomized version better just because there's so much more potential for variety. Every round plays out differently, and it keeps you on your toes for every scenario. But for those of you that like consistency, that option is available too. 
As for everything else on the map, there's a perfect amount of elevation change. It's not entirely flat, but also doesn't rapidly change to the point where it's overwhelming. Pretty much everything that makes up the terrain can be farmed, so you can always stop somewhere to stock up on materials if needed. We'll leave both codes in the description. Try them both out and let us know which one you prefer, the RNG version or the one with set loadouts. Box Fighting Knowing how to rotate and play around the storm aren't the only skills you'll need for the endgame. You also need to know how to box fight. Sometimes you'll run into late game scenarios where an opponent pressures your box, and you gotta respond with force or risk losing right then and there. Or in other matches, you'll be low on resources, like maybe only a few hundred mats and no heals left, so you have to play aggressively just to get a kill and survive. Being good at box fighting is one of the best ways to survive and pick up elims during those situations. Not only that, but box fighting is a particularly useful skill to have for all stages of the game. So if you're still trying to improve purely by free building and creative or with build battles, forget that. You need to start practicing box fights. Okay, enough about the importance of box fighting. Let's get to the next map, Jess Grand's Box Fights. Ah, this map features simplicity at its finest. Before you start, you can choose between solos, duos, trios, or squads by opening your menu and selecting teams. So if you want a 1v1, one player would pick team 1 and the other team 2. If you're trying to 2v2, two players choose team 3 and the other two pick team 4, and so on. As for the loot pool, everyone spawns with the same two weapons. It'll be a random choice between the tack shoddy or pump, as well as a rifle or an SMG. Everyone gets the same healing items and starts with 500 wood, with an additional 100 per elim. The creator decided not to include health siphoning on elims as to not automatically favor the team that gets the first kill, so there's plenty of room for clutch potential. Some people might not like the random loadout design choice, but I think that being forced to practice with different items is beneficial in its own way. Besides, these are weapons you're likely to carry into the endgame, so it's not like there's a grey pump or a sniper or anything. Of course, while it's nice to play with a purple pump and scar, the chances you'll find and use those in a real match are slim. So in terms of getting practical box fighting experience, this map provides some of the best. Though I'm sure most of you have tinkered with box fighting before, here are a few tips in case you haven't. When you spawn, try to get structure control immediately. Place ramps and walls outwards and try to control as much of the area as you can. Don't waste all your mats though, you want to save at least a couple hundred for later. Of course, structure control is crucial for box fighting, so always try to take control of enemy walls, floors, and pyramid so you can practice your edits and right side peaks. And if you're playing with teammates, don't ever run off solo to look for kills. Always coordinate and pick a target with your team if you can. If you just run off on your own, any good opponents are going to single you out and pinch you from opposite sides, which is precisely what you and your team need to be doing. Going off solo and dying to multiple enemies is probably the most prominent mistake players make in team-based box fights, and it's something you should work hard to avoid. Overall, if you're looking for a simple box fighting map with flexibility on teams and a slightly random loadout, then this is the one that you want to check out. Alright, so to close things off, we found this really unique combination of a map we want to show you guys. It's called Box Wars by up-and-coming creator Peaceful. As you can probably tell by the name, this map's a hybrid between zone wars and box fighting. How it works is that up to 16 players spawn in a large arena. Once you have your spawn room and start building, you've got about 15 seconds before the storm begins closing in. The storm adds a unique aspect to the whole box fighting mode. Not only does it provide camping, but it forces players to make interesting choices when it comes to approaching opponents and navigating the labyrinth of structures, all of which can come into play during a real match. What it's most similar to are those games that go to the very end and get extremely tight with builds in every direction. We think this map does a fantastic job of teaching players how to work through all those structures and look for kills while also avoiding storm pressure. In terms of loadouts, everyone spawns with the same two weapons, a blue AR and a purple pump. Also, three minis for heals. So if you're looking for a box fighting map with a more consistent loadout, this one's for you. The map designer wanted to include fish, but apparently a lot of rounds were ending in heal offs, which isn't the most climactic to quit end things off. So, the right decision in our books. The only complaints we have are that the arena starts off kinda big if you've only got a few players, but with how the storm closes in, that problem eventually goes away and you're left with some intense close range action. Also, variety in the loot pool would be nice, but then again, it's all preference with whether you like RNG or not. Overall, it's a great new concept, and if you're looking for something unique, you should definitely give it a go. 
If you're looking to improve your end games, these four maps all provide unique lessons to learn from. Play them often, learn from your mistakes, you'll be able to take what you've learned back to Battle Royale, and in no time, you'll find yourself closing out more games than ever before. Thanks so much for watching everyone, if you enjoyed this video, you know the drill, smash that like and subscribe button, if you try out all the maps, let us know which ones are your favorites, if Playground Phil maybe isn't your jam, we've included a link to Enigma's Discord in the description. On it, you can find other players to join or host your own lobbies. Oh, and all the map codes are down there too, of course. Alright guys, that's it for today's video, we really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES when you make any sort of purchases, it really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought about this video and what you'd like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks so much for watching everyone, once again it's your host Dan, you can find me at, at Daniel Ammerman, and I'll see you guys in the next one.